Well, good morning, guys, and welcome back to the channel, and welcome to the Lake District. Now, obviously, we've been running a workshop in Harrison Lewis, so we're back from that. So Adam and I have come down to the lakes for a week just to explore the area and see what we can find. We're all ready this morning. Um, I've missed the best of the light with wrestling with bloody car parks in the Lake District. So we've come down towards the River Brathe and there's a car park called Silverthwaite Car Park and uh, it's operated by one of those Ringo apps which is fantastic in the Lake District because there's no bloody signal and the machine's broken but they still capture your registration on the way into the car park with one of these cameras so uh, I didn't want to hang around in there because it's a hundred pound fine so uh, yeah just beware of that because honestly they expect you to pay online and if you haven't got a signal well what do you do so yeah great start to the morning there's a lovely red glow on the mountains beyond there I've missed that um, yeah so not a fantastic start to the day but hey is what it is what can I do now I've just got to crack on see what else I can find and hopefully redeem myself somehow hopefully when the light actually gets above the, the hills here it uh, it might even itself out and be okay fingers crossed though eh so guys it all seems to be happening this morning you know one of those days where you do wonder whether you should get you should have gotten up or not so i've gotten all the way down to the riverside here not only did i kind of miss the light this morning I've also left the uh, the clip for my other tripod back in the van, so I can't mount cameras to uh, walk you guys through anything. So I'm going to have to use the Osmo just to, to guide you through here. But you can see this scene in the background here, which I really quite like. Would have been a lot better with the, uh, the first light that we got before, because it was really beautiful. It was really warm tones on the hills. The moon was rising just looks stunning so it's going to be a location that I think we're going to have to return to in the morning I don't really want to miss out on it because the conditions are obviously frosty and I think it's going to be similar tomorrow although there may not be the cloud um, in the morning but it just is what it is it's just one of those things but yeah I found this scene and I want to I'm going to use a strip panel for it because I think it works really really well I really like the look of these grasses down here um, just below the camera there and then off in the distance obviously I think you've got the Langdales in the background there beautiful um, trees and everything on the right hand side and the left hand side of the frame which are now being illuminated by the sun kind of the first first part of the sun as it's just cre crept over the hills behind there um, but I'm going to get you to the back of the camera I'm going to have to kind of do this on the fly and walk you through it as we go and I'll just get set up and I'll show you my scene. Right, so hopefully you'll be able to see this. Um, <clears throat> hopefully well, you'll see I've got this um, lovely crop pano here. Like I was telling you before there, we've got the reeds in the lower section of the frame. I've got my focus point kind of in the uh, off the lower third of the frame in the centre there. And the mountains off in the distance kind of central centered in the middle of the frame with these trees off to the right and the other trees off to the left there to kind of try and balance things out a little a lovely sky although not as good as it was first thing this morning and then the uh, the Langdale's off in the distance there lovely reflection in the water it's it's just a really nice simple shot I'm at ISO 100 f16 uh, 15th of the second and uh, yeah, simple shot. Two second timer, and here it is.
light. So it just goes to show that you don't give up when you think you've uh, you've missed the best light because look at what's happening behind me here. You can probably just see just behind the camera here all that mist. I'll just press record on here. You can see all that mist rising up off uh, off the river. We've got those two trees that are well known off to the left there. And you can just see it's rising up. I've lowered my camera into uh, like a crop pano mode. Again, because I think it works really, really well for this scene. Um, you can see my uh, focus point just down here. I'll just highlight it. There you go. It's just on the edge of these grasses which are being you know, illuminated by the sun from the side here, which looks really, really beautiful. Just watching the mist as it rolls off the river there, and it's just a beautiful, simple scene. Now, I've lowered the camera because what happens is, what you've got is, if I just zoom out here, you see the amount of sky I have in the shot there? I've lowered the camera down and zoomed in to get rid of that sky, just to simplify the scene a lot more. Now it cuts off the top of the trees, but that doesn't concern me too much. You've got that fence leading in there from the from the left hand side. And then, yeah, it's just, just so beautiful and so simple. So yeah, just grabbing this shot now, focus point on there, just on the edge. And then uh, two second timer again, and grab the shot. Now, similar settings to before, I'm at ISO 100, F16 at a fifteenth of a second and just underexposing just slightly because that sun is coming in from the left hand side of the frame there and just don't want to have any missing details there. I'm just going to bring the shot up there and make sure the histogram's okay and it's all looking great. So hopefully this shot's turned out, it's just nice and simple but again beautiful shot, definitely need to come back here in the morning. Here's this shot though. So again, what I've done, it's the same shot as I've just been taking. Now obviously the mist and everything has gone off the top of the water now down there. But what it's left is uh, really nice reflection. So I've gained a little bit of elevation up here. I'll just show you the back of the screen again. Now what I'm trying to do here, hopefully you'll be able to see in the, in the screen now, is that I've got a 16 by 9 and the reason for that is, is because I want to get rid of all that sky above this section here. So if I zoom out where you can't really see too well actually if I do that um, no you can't you can't really tell too much but the reason for it is is just in that top corner there's a little bit of sky creeping into the frame and I, I it's too much of a distraction it's really bright white on that left however though because of the sun being over in that top corner what it's actually doing is if I select that, you should be able to see from this top corner of the frame up here, is it's it's given like a nice glow. The sun's kind of glowing down into the into that top corner of the frame, into those that group of trees, that little hump of trees there on the left. And it's also adding light to those other trees which are kind of in central of the frame there. If I just sort of spin you around a little bit more there, just in the centre of the frame there, there's another two trees. And then that group on the left there, it's actually pushing light into that section. And it's really quite nice with that glow across there, especially when the sun's not hidden behind these clouds, which it is at the minute. When that light comes through, it's really quite nice and it just kind of gives a really nice atmosphere about it, even though that fog isn't there anymore. So again, ISO 100, I'm at a fourth of a second, I've got the... Uh, the 100 to 200 on the uh, on the camera at the minute to get a little bit tighter in f16 fourth of a second 
two second timer and here's the shot. So guys, just want to jump in here and tell you about a couple of workshops that I have coming up. I have one with Matt Bishop in uh, Italy and that's running from the end of January to February and that's actually in Tuscany. It's the first year we're actually running this one. So can't wait to show you guys some of the fantastic areas that we have to visit there. Um, the second one is in um, the US Islands and that's with my good friend Dean Allen. We ran the same workshops this year fantastic locations beautiful islands out on the outer hebrides in scotland definitely worth checking out and we have a few spaces left for march next year as well we're also running another one later in the year and that's in october i'll leave all the de details in the description below i'll also leave a card up above here so you can click on those as well thanks very much guys so we've uh, come up onto Lufrig Fell now and it's <laughs> it's absolutely freezing up here. We, ooh, is that smoke out there? Yeah, it could be, yeah. I thought it was fog for a minute, but it's not smoke, it's blue. Yeah, so we've come up onto uh, Lufrig Fell just to kind of see what the area looked like because it kind of looked all right from the uh, from the look on the phone and, and maps and what have you. It looked like quite a nice area. And it is, you can see down into Grasmere from this direction. Coniston Lake that direction um, yeah really really nice and also down Elterwater down in front of us as well now I've got the camera facing out towards Elterwater and the Langdales out that way and what kind of drew my attention to it was all the layers um, I'll just press record on the back here you'll be able to see it so you can see I've got this um, pano format set up again now I've taken two shots I've taken a square crop and a pano but I'll show you the pano first it's just focusing on those layers that are going back there. I've got this first one in the foreground here with the rocks just off to the left. And the sun's just catching that on the left-hand side. And then all those other layers which are further out that way are catching the sun. So um, on the right-hand side you'll see all those layers are actually getting lit from the side. And the other side of the composition are all in shades. So I think it's kind of... It, it, works really well together so I've taken it as a pano first and you can just see on the left there I've just got my um, my root the, the grid lines off to the uh, to those stones on the left hand side I've also got the other grid line at the top focused on the uh, one of the Langdale peaks over there so what I'm doing as well is I've got a circular polarizer on just to darken those clouds slightly and um, give a bit more contrast to the landscape as well. I'm at ISO 100 F16, currently at a sixth of a second, and uh, I'll just grab this shot now. Just also waiting for the clouds to come in and roll in a little further and give a little bit more um, sort of texture to the sky and, and just give a little bit more interest what I've done with the square crop I'll, I'll show both and you can tell me which one you prefer but what I've done with the square crop is focusing on the on the middle part of the frame 
So where my focus point is now, I've done a square crop in that sort of area, so it just focuses more on the layers themselves, those crossing intersections going backwards, rather than the full broader landscape. But I think it works really, really well. I just like the light that was hitting the hills in the distance there, so that really drew my attention and, and uh, thought I'd made a shot out of it. Anyway, hopefully these shots have turned out. Let me know which one of them you prefer, and I'll pop them up now for you. As you can kind of see by my face, the light is starting to uh, drop in the sky now. The sun's starting to fade behind the mountains there and it's really, really nice, beautiful warm light up here. So it's a case of rushing around really, trying to find a composition because the light's ever changing in these valleys. It really does change. If I just kind of spin you around here, that's kind of where I'm focusing on at the minute, down this valley. Because as that sun drops behind the hill over there, it's sending shafts of light through the valley there. So I've been using the 100 to 200 to kind of get in close there and uh, use the Langdales off there because we're getting some of these nice textures in the clouds even though there's quite a bit of blue sky which I'm not a huge fan of but the sky's pretty interesting looking as well. So using those rays of light coming through there and using the light that's hitting the Langdales I think there's quite a nice composition there. I haven't walked you through this one because it's very much a, a kind of rush shot to kind of grab it before this light fades because I don't think I've got too long before the sun dips below the hills back there and once that happens we're going to pretty much lose all the light. So I'm going to focus on this area, get really tight in probably, um, nothing too complicated, it's going to be a simple shot, probably ISO 100, F16, um, a fastest shutter speed because there's nothing that I really need to slow down in this frame. In fact, if anything, I want to kind of freeze the action, so it's going to be a pretty fast shutter speed, I would imagine. Grab this shot, and hopefully, if it turns out, I'll pop it up now for you. So yeah, I think we're kind of getting to the end of it now, although it's been absolutely beautiful today. A lovely start down at the River Brathe this morning. I think we're going to look at returning there tomorrow because it looks absolutely beautiful down there. And I'm just hoping that we get some uh, decent light like we did this morning, and maybe some f more fog on there. Although I did capture a couple of shots with mist across the water, it would be nice to have a little bit more fog just to add a little bit more separation there. But yeah, what a beautiful evening up here. I can't feel my hands anymore, <laughs> they're br bright red. But uh, yeah, absolutely stunning up here tonight. We're almost at the end of it. I'm gonna go and see what Adam's doing. I think he's over the back of this hill over here somewhere. So uh, I'm gonna see what he's been shooting and then uh, catch up with you on the next video. So hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one soon. Take care, bye-bye.